take a few minutes to go over the goodwill aspect of the situation here and really get into what is the goodwill and what is goodwill impairment, right? So, you know, the situation is that say Microsoft bought Apple at 60 billion with a goodwill of 58 billion, right? When you put that goodwill on your balance sheet as Microsoft, on the consolidated statement, the goodwill would appear, right? It would appear. So we have that there. Now, two years down the line, Apple sinks in value from 60 billion to like 2 billion. What happened to that 58 billion of goodwill on the Microsoft balance sheet? Is it still valid? No. No, because the underlying, the goodwill is very interesting. It's an asset on your balance sheet that is dependent to what degree the fair value of your previously acquired asset still exceeds its book value. So if the excess at the time of acquisition was 58 billion, but the current excess is only 20 billion, then you have to impair by 38 billion. What's going on? Because goodwill is the excess of fair value over book value. You recorded that. But that's based on the notion that there was value. But value is alive. It depends on what's going on in the moment. So now two years later, there's no more value, means no more goodwill. So companies who made acquisitions and recorded goodwills go through a test every year. They go through a test of figuring out whether that goodwill has been impaired. Right? If the goodwill has been impaired, then you have to write it down. How does, get, how does goodwill get impaired? Okay, so say you acquired Apple and it's now two years down the line. You examine to see what is the value of Apple currently. Now if the value has declined, then you proceed to make a valuation to get an exact value. If you get an exact value and the value indicates a goodwill, in other words, fair value, whose excess now is less than what the excess that you recorded before, you record an impairment for that difference, right? What's the idea that I'm trying to convey is that if you previously bought Apple for 60 billion and the goodwill was, uh, say, 50 billion, but now Apple is worth 50 billion, what's the impairment to goodwill? 10, right? 10 billion, because in a way, if the value went down from 60 to 50, that's all an impairment of goodwill for you. Basically, you just reduce the goodwill by the reduction in the value of the company. That's all you do. You know, there, there are a couple of slides in, in the online about it, and there's sort of a long and deliberate thing here about it in terms of what we're doing, you know, the assessment that we perform. It's sort of like you go through and you try to figure out through this flow chart what, what's happening with the asset. So evaluate relevant events or circumstances to determine whether it's more likely than not that the fair value of the reporting unit is less than the carrying amount. Well, I'm saying, so when you buy Apple, for example, you record your own goodwill based on the fact that the fair value exceeded the book value. 